All right, kiddos, welcome back. We're continuing our discussion of oxidation and reduction, and we ended the last video with an introduction to something called oxidation numbers. And we said, you know, for ionic compounds, finding oxidation numbers is pretty simple. For instance, if I have something like, uh, I don't know, CaCl2, calcium chloride, um, we know that to attain a noble gas configuration, calcium loses two electrons. It has a positive two oxidation number. And each of the chlorines um, gain one electron to achieve a noble gas configuration. So each of their oxidation numbers is negative one. Um, let me give another example. Let's say we had Fe2O3. Well, iron's one of those transition metals. It can actually have multiple oxidation states. So we learned earlier in the year um, to do uh, the other atom that it's bonded to first. So oxygen gains two electrons to attain a noble gas configuration. So we would say its oxidation number is negative two. Now, because there are three oxygens, that gives me a total of six negatives. The compound is neutral. So I need to get six positives out of these two irons here. So each of those would have an oxidation number of positive three. Now, what if we run into this situation? Let's say we have NO, nitrogen monoxide, or if we had NO2, or maybe we have N2O. So we run into a problem because we don't have um, well, we have two nonmetals that we're used to having gain electrons and have negative oxidation numbers, the both of them. And then the compound, of course, would not be neutral. So there has to be another way to find oxidation numbers for situations like this. So here are a few rules that will hopefully make finding oxidation numbers relatively easy. Number one, atoms in their elemental state will always have an oxidation number of zero. So if I have iron metal, gold metal, um, fluorine gas, F2, um, helium, those would have oxidation numbers of zero when they're in their elemental state. They're not sharing electrons with anything else. Then number two, if we have a compound, we find the most electronegative element in that compound and then we give that element its charge. So remember, as we look at the periodic table, kiddos, electronegativity increases when we move to the right. And it increases when we move up. Now that's from earlier this year when we were doing periodic properties. So we would take the most electronegative element and give it its charge. So oftentimes oxygen is the most electronegative element in a compound. Its charge would be two negative because it needs to gain two electrons to achieve a noble gas configuration. Now, if oxygen wasn't the most electronegative element, let's say it's, uh, let's say it's fluorine. If fluorine's the most electronegative element in a compound, its charge would be negative one because it gains one to become to have a noble gas configuration. Um, sometimes nitrogen might be the most electronegative element in a compound. And if nitrogen is, it would gain three to have a noble gas configuration and it would be negative three. So find the most electronegative element in the compound or ion and give it its charge and that charge of course will be negative. Now, the other elements in a compound will have a charge of zero or a positive charge. This is true 99.9% .9 of the time. We determine their charges algebraically. Remember, they can only be as positive as possible. And also, the sum of all oxidation numbers must equal zero in a compound or the charge of the ion in a polyatomic ion. Remember, of course, that oxidation numbers are apparent charges that an atom has. It may or may not be the real charge. 
Now the best way to do these is to just work through some examples. And after we do a few, I think you'll get the hang of it. So let's find the oxidation number for each element in the following compounds or ions. So letter A, we have water. That's a compound, so let's find the most electronegative element in that compound, and sure enough, that is oxygen. And oxygen, we just saw, has a negative 2 oxidation number. Now, the other elements will, be, will have an oxidation number of 0, or they'll have a positive charge. So, what's the positive charge of hydrogen here? Well, there are two of them, and the sum of the charge needs to equal 0, so each hydrogen has to have an oxidation number of positive 1. Now, let's take a look at letter B. Letter B is a bit tricky. If we use the same thought process that we used on letter A, we would do it this way. Oxygen is the most electronegative, so we would give it a negative 2 charge. Now that would give me a sum of 4 negatives, because there's two oxygens here, kiddos. And that would mean I would need 4 positives. So, we might say that hydrogen has a positive 2 charge. Hmm. Let's see. That were positive 2, and there were two hydrogens. That would be four positives, and that would balance out the four negatives from my oxygens. But if we look at the periodic table here, here's hydrogen. It only has one electron. <laughs> so the most it could lose would be one, the highest positive charge it can have is positive 1. So in that situation, we can only make the positive species as positive as it can possibly be. So if hydrogen can only be positive 1, that means in this situation, the oxidation number of that oxygen would be negative 1. Okay, that was a bit tricky. All right, let's try letter C and D, then I'll have you try a few on your own. Okay, on letter C, we have carbon monoxide. Oxygen is the most electronegative. It's negative 2, and that would mean carbon would have to be positive 2 in this particular situation. Let's see if that's possible. So carbon, let's clear the page so it's not so claustrophobic here. Here's carbon. It's in group 14. It has four valence electrons, so its maximum oxidation number could be four positive. So two positive is certainly possible for carbon monoxide. Let's do carbon dioxide, CO2. The most electronegative element is oxygen. That's negative two, and that would make this carbon positive four, which we just saw. Carbon is in group 14, and so it can have an oxidation number of up to positive four. All right, let's take a look at the next example, HNO3. So now we have three elements in this compound. The most electronegative element is oxygen, again, and so we're going to call that negative two. Now that gives me a total of six negatives because there are three oxygens there. So, in that situation, we have to have six positives. So what are we going to do? Well, we know hydrogen can be positive 1 only. That's as, most, that's as high of a positive oxidation number as it can get. And that would leave me with five more positives for my nitrogen. Let's see if that's possible. So we find nitrogen on the periodic table. It's in group 15. It does have five valence electrons. That's as positive as it can be. So that is possible. All right, why don't you try letter F on your own? Pause the video, try letter F, then come back and we'll see how you did. All right, welcome back. All right, did you say that oxygen's negative two? That gives me a total of six negatives because there are three oxygens there, so I have to have six positives. So let's do sodium first. Sodium is in group one. It has one valence electron, so the most positive it can be is positive one for each sodium. Now there are two sodiums, so that gives me two positive charges. So that must mean sulfur would be positive four. That would give me a total of six positives to balance out the six negatives for my neutral compound. Is that what you did? All right, try letter G and H. 
see how you do on those two. All right, welcome back. For letter G, hey, there's oxygen again. Boy, there's only one element more electronegative than oxygen, and that's fluorine. So most of the time, when you have oxygen in a compound, it will have an oxidation number of negative 2. Not always, but most of the time it will. All right, now we have two other elements. Let's see, I have four oxygens, so that gives me a total of eight negatives, so I need eight positives. Let's do potassium first. Potassium is in group one. It's right there, kiddos. So it can have a one positive charge only. So that's positive one. And that leaves me needing seven more positives. And I'm going to assign manganese a seven positive oxidation number. Now let's look at the periodic table and see if that's possible for manganese. Manganese is right here. Its configuration, if you remember, ends with 4s2, 3d1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 4s2, 3d5. If it lost the 2 from the 4s and the 5 from the 3d, that could be a positive 7 charge. So yeah, that's possible for manganese. Letter H. Boy, this one's a a little complicated here because we have this two outside the parentheses. Well, let's work with it. Oxygen's the most electronegative. That's negative two. Now I have six oxygens here, don't I? Boy, that's, uh, that's 12 negatives. So I need to get 12 positives. So let's do calcium first. Calcium is in group two, right there. So it can have a positive two oxidation number. I still need 10 more positives but I have two nitrogens to get me there. So if I need 10 positives and I have two nitrogens, each nitrogen will be positive five. And we can check. Sure enough, nitrogen is in group 15. We saw that earlier. It can have an oxidation number up to five positive. All right, go ahead and do letters I and J and come back and we'll see how you did. See you in a sec. All right, for letter I, oxygen's two negative. Uh, there's three of them, so that gives you six negatives, kiddos. Sodium, we just saw in an earlier problem, is in group one, so the most positive it can be is positive one. So I still need four more positives, and so carbon would be positive four or four positive. It's in group 14, so that is certainly possible. Letter J, NO2. Oxygen's two negative, that gives you four negatives total because there are two oxygens, and that must mean the nitrogen is positive four. Now, let's take a look at letter K. This is an example of an ion. In this particular situation, the sum of the oxidation number will be the charge of the ion. So in this case, it will be negative one. So let's go ahead and give oxygen its oxidation number of negative two. There are four of them, so that's eight negatives. So I need to have seven positives this time because I want to have a negative left over. Hydrogen's in group one, so it can only be positive one. And so that means sulfur would be positive six. Let's find sulfur. Sulfur is right here on the periodic table. It's in group 16. So it can be up to six positive. So yeah, that's possible. Okay, next, H2S2O7. Oxygen's negative two. There are seven of them. Boy, that's 14 negatives. Well, we know hydrogen can only be positive one here. So that's two more positives because of my two hydrogens. And now I need 12 more positives. So each sulfur can be six positive. And so that works. We know sulfur can be positive six. We just saw in the previous example. All right, let's do a few more. Do M through P. And O and P are going to be a little tricky. I'm interested to see how you do. So give the last four a shot, then come back to the video, and we'll see how you did. Okay? All right, welcome back. Letter M. Um, that shouldn't be too bad. We have Al2S3. Well, this time, sulfur is the most electronegative element. Its charge, let's see, it would be negative one, negative two to become like a noble gas. So sulfur in this example has a negative oxidation number of two. It's the most electronegative element in the compound. 
Now there are three sulfurs, so that gives me six negatives. I need to get six positives. There are two aluminums to get me there, so each one must be positive three. Of course, you knew that. We learned earlier in the year that aluminum, when it forms a bond, is always positive three. Okay, letter N, MN, Cl2. Cl is the most electronegative element this time. And if we find chlorine on the periodic table, it's right there. And its charge will be negative one. That gives me two negatives, and that means manganese has to be positive two. All right, now the two that gave you a headache. All right, C6, H12, O6. Well, we have oxygen in the compound again, so that's going to be negative 2. There are 6 of them, so that gives me a total of 12 negatives, doesn't it? So between these two guys right here, I need to get 12 positives. So, we have carbon and hydrogen. We know the only positive charge that hydrogen can have is positive 1. Now that gives me 12 positives already. I don't need any more positive charges. So in this case, carbon will have an oxidation number of zero, and that is possible. How about letter P? That was even stranger. -er. Okay, we assigned oxygen an oxidation number of two negative, so that gave me eight negatives because I have four oxygens there, kiddos. And so with my three manganeses, I need to get to positive eight. Well, you can't divide 8 by 3 evenly, so we're going to have a fraction. So the oxidation number for each manganese would be positive 8 thirds. Now, the smart person is going to say, Hummer, you can't have a fraction of an electron being lost, and you're right. The way it turns out is that some of these manganeses lose two electrons, and some of them lose three electrons. So this turns out to be the average oxidation number of each manganese in that compound. Okay, so you can have a fraction for an oxidation number. It turns out to be the average charge. Okay? All right. Well, there is your tutorial on how to find oxidation numbers. We'll do several more of these in class, and we will apply them when we start doing chemical reactions on the next video. So we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.